we go to Washington where US President Donald Trump has made his first speech to Congress following that what turbulent first month in office in his primetime address Mr Trump stuck to his script very closely reading much of it off auto cue and doing very little of the ad-libbing that has been his trademark his themes were as predicted but his tone was more controlled than he has often been recent threats targeting Jewish community centers and vandalism of Jewish cemeteries as well as last week's shooting in Kansas City remind us that while we may be a nation divided on policies, we are a country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all of its very ugly forms. Each American generation passes the torch of truth, liberty and justice, in an unbroken chain all the way down to the present. That torch is now in our hands, and we will use it to light up the world. I am here tonight to deliver a message of unity and strength, and it is a message deeply delivered from my heart. Donald Trump, let's go to Washington. Simon Marks, our correspondent, has been watching the speech closely and pouring back over it. Hi, Simon. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, boy, someone said to him, you behave yourself, because that was a speech in which great control was being exercised, right? Without question, and I think uh, most observers are concluding that the someone who said that to him was almost certainly his daughter, Ivanka Trump, who was sitting up in the gods there uh, in the U.S. Capitol building alongside her husband, Jared Kushner, both of them uh, significant influences over Donald Trump. And you could see Ivanka Trump's fingerprints certainly over the beginning of the speech, where you heard there Donald Trump finally addressing the issue of hate crimes here in the United States, finally speaking out over over the uh, killing of an Indian software engineer in Kansas last week and then at the end of the speech where he particularly spoke uh, about early childhood education, about trying to improve opportunities for women in the United States uh, and really offered a vision of a United States that he insists can come together and unify after five and a half turbulent weeks here of his presidency so far. But, you know, the, the biggest takeaway of this speech, I think, was the fact that he could actually do it. Here he was in this amazing forum, making for the first time ever a, a speech to both houses of Congress. He was very nervous about it. When he left the White House, uh, the television cameras glimpsed him sitting in the back of the limo in the driveway shortly before it pulled away. And you could see him rehearsing cadences mm. of the script, trying to get comfortable with it. But it wasn't just the words that I suspect he was rehearsing. It was the tonality of it. There was no attack on the media in this speech. There was no mention of Hillary Clinton. He didn't use the word Russia in the speech at all. This was a man who you could almost hear trying to turn a new page in the story of his very young presidency. The question, of course, is where does that story lead? Yes. It's fascinating, isn't it? I think ABC was running a focus group and a woman was asked, what do you think of this? And she said, that's not Donald Trump. I'll see the real Donald Trump at midnight on Twitter. And, uh, and is this persuasive? <laughs> it's a lo lovely response. Is this persuasive? Because in a way, the Democrats looked a little bit po-faced. If Trump can pull this off, if Trump can make this uh, a reliable and consistent tonality that he can produce way more often than he has, it will work for him, won't it? Well, let's be clear, John, this is the first and only time he's <laughs> produced this tonality. Uh, I think we need to see it being produced at least one more time before we can call it a streak. Uh, I mean, there's no question that it's going to be challenging for him, uh, a man who has not shown a great degree of discipline in the presidency or outside it, to continue wandering down this particular avenue. But you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I mean, there was a split screen. It wasn't a split screen, but it was effectively a split screen,
that Americans were offered tonight. Republicans on one side uh, of the room getting up and cheering everything he said. Democrats looking increasingly glum as they sat on their hands and looking, I think, increasingly glum because they realized that this was far and away the most presidential performance that he had ever given and a crucial performance given that it was being transmitted into living rooms across the country. Now, he still didn't have answers to some of the enormous problems he faces. There was a big cheer from Republicans when he said he wants to repeal and replace Obamacare, but the Democrats know the Republicans have no idea how they're actually going to do that without causing enormous hardship for millions of Americans. Two other areas where he made news tonight. First of all, immigration. He opened the door to what he described as a complete shift uh, in America's immigration system, talking about the possibility of a merit-based system modelled on the Australian model. That would be a radical move away from the history of immigration over the yeah. last 30 or 40 years here. Uh, and it's something that he reached out across the aisle, encouraging Democrats to get behind. But the most effective moment of this speech was when he paid tribute to the widow of a slain American serviceman who died on that raid in Yemen shortly after President Trump became president and commander in chief. She won a sustained ovation and that was politically a masterstroke by Donald Trump who for days has been criticized for not having been sufficiently empathetic over the loss of that serviceman or towards his family. Thank you, Simon. Really appreciate that analysis. Simon Marks on, uh, on Donald Trump, as Simon said, easily his strongest speech as US president, arguably a low bar, but it was the Philip the Republicans needed. It will be fascinating to watch to see whether he can maintain that over the days and weeks and months ahead. Simon Marks live from Washington.